Hi, I'm Scott Hansman. It's Azure Friday. I'm here with Scott Goo, and we're working our way down the uh, left-hand side yep. of the portal here. Uh, mobile services. Yeah, so we talked a little bit earlier about virtual machines, which gives you the ability to run anything um, where you're the full administrator in the box. You set up IS, you manage it. We looked at websites, which is a higher level abstraction, okay. which basically allows you to host web sites and web applications where you don't have to think about the virtual machines, you don't have to think about IIS, you just focus on the app. Right. Mobile services is kind of that logical equivalent for mobile apps. And it basically lets you stand up a back-end service, which is ideal and, and kind of tuned for being the back-end for like a phone app or a tablet-based app or any kind of client app. Okay. Um, and um, it provides a nice platform as a service model uh, that lets you really focus just on your mobile app and not have to worry about the infrastructure. So, so VMs, websites, mobile services is a kind of a website. It's kind of a peer to a website. It's kind of in some ways a specialized. It's it's mobile. You talk to mobile services with uh, HTTP web APIs, mm -hmm. um, but instead of being content focused, it's much more focused on APIs, and it has nice built-in features for doing things like authentication. So I can go ahead and paste in my Facebook or my um, uh, Google ID or Microsoft ID and do single sign-on with OAuth tokens from my phone app. Right. Um, that's built in. Uh, we have a nice uh, way to kind of save and retrieve data in a secure way per user that you can take advantage of. Uh, we have nice features for doing push notifications. So if I want to broadcast a push message to uh, my mobile phones or mobile devices, um, it's, it's built in there as well. And so, so the nice a, thing... It's a back-end in a box. Ba mobile back-end in a box is, is a great okay way to think about say? it. Is that okay to say? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a good way to think about it. Because I'm, I'm thinking like I could, I, I could make a website Yep. And I could make that website use Web API or use Node yep. and get data, do, yep. do CRUD, yep. create, re, create, read, update, delete. But this is giving me all of that, plus auth and identity and scale, et cetera. All built in, yep. That makes sense? Yep. I made one yep. uh, called Super Mobile Service, and it says here, choose a platform. One of the cool things about this is our mobile backend capability works with all types of client devices. And so you can use them to build Windows 8 apps or Windows Phone apps. But we have great support for iOS, great support for Android. You can even use HTML JavaScript and take advantage of the CORS protocol, which is a cross-site uh, kind of scripting capability. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you just want to have a vanilla single-page application, talk to a backend, you can do that as well. So I'm going to make one. I'm going to hit Create a New App. And they're going to basically make me a to-do application. Yeah, this is here. the dashboard, or this is the kind of the quick start view that you see when you first create a service. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, you can you know, click skip and you won't see it the next time you're here. But the nice thing about this quick start view is we have some really simple instructions that you can follow that kind of help show you how to create a simple app. So right here, we just created a table in the database right. um, called the to-do item. You can then download a little app here. Uh, this is the HTML version, so it's going to download the HTML pages in JavaScript to basically host it. Okay. Um, uh, if you were, you know, had selected the iOS tab, it would download an Xcode project that you could open on your Mac. Yeah, uh, it, actually, it named it. It, it named, named it, it like it named it what I the name that I gave it. So it actually yeah. it put all my stuff in there, right? Like if I look at the source, it put the connection strings and all the stuff that I would would potentially want to use. Yep, already populated in there. The JavaScript. Yeah, see. With your URL already populated. And my my secret code, which is no longer a secret. Yeah. So if I go and say launch Windows. That's going to go and uh, and run this this script here, and now it says it's running on port eight thousand. Okay. So if I go and say localhost eight thousand. Oops, <laughs> I just I just searched the internet for localhost eight thousand. There you go. Ah, okay. So look, here's the server, and I'll just say uh, get milk. Call mom, add. Where's yep. that data going? So what this is doing here is this is the HTML site. It's calling these mobile backend APIs inside Windows Azure Mobile Services. And so if you go back to the portal now and scroll up, okay. what you should see is if you click this data tab, this is where that to-do item table is. Mm -hmm. And if you click on it, you can actually drill into it. And what you should see is oh, those two items. And so that's now being stored on the server inside Azure. And I can now retrieve them and access them from JavaScript. And then what's cool is I can go to the script tab. And in the script tab, I can optionally write some server-side script that fires every time someone does an insert, update, delete, or a read. 
And so if I want to add, for example, authentication code that says, hey, only Scott can see his items or things like that, mm -hmm. you could actually go ahead and uh, do all that um, and, um, and get some really nice um, uh, support for you know, basically adding security um, however you want. And you can see yeah. we even have... Um, I was just goofing around and it's telling me that, well, don't goof around because that doesn't do anything. It's saying I is unused. Yeah. So don't use that. Nice, <laughs> nice in the browser and tell sense and, and support like that. Um, and um, yeah, and so it's all nicely integrated. It's, it's a great way if, especially if you're uh, building mobile apps and you don't have a lot of server experience mm -hmm. um, and you're more of a, a UI front end guy, this provides a really nice way that you don't actually have to be a server guy in order to actually stand up your back end. But at the same time, if you want to go deep, you can create your own custom web APIs, you can do your own custom auth schemes. So you can, you can go also very, very deep on the back end. But it provides a nice way that if, if you're new to server programming, this is a great way to get started and you can be immediately productive building your client apps. I was at a, uh, a hackathon recently. It was, a, it was a women's hackathon in New York and uh, I was working with a particular group that were all expert front end developers with no back end experience. Yep. And we ended up putting up one of these and then they were just calling it with jQuery, some with raw JavaScript, some with curl at the command line. Yep. And suddenly they felt like they were database programmers because they didn't have to think about it anymore. They just yep. posted JSON yep. and the database made itself. The columns generated themselves yep. from the posted JSON. It's a pretty sweet service to check out. It, it lets you, as Scott mentioned, be immediately productive. Uh, and really focus on getting your app built quickly and, and up and going. There's a lot more features we have. We've barely scratched the surface. Oh yeah, on. I'm going to go and talk to the team. Of. I'm going to try to get the mobile services folks, whoever the people are that wrote this, to come here and hang out with us cool. on Azure Friday.